Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here, January 1937, and we are on the German turn of January 37. So, um, we are going to do, uh, I believe they had 23 or $24 in income, saved a couple bucks from last turn. We're going to do a tech roll, and we're going to try to keep uh, getting heavy armor for that. We're gonna buy a sub for five. We're gonna move the battleship one more for five. We're gonna buy a artillery for th four. We're gonna buy another mountain infantry for the nationalists in Spain for four, and we're gonna save three dollars. So let's go ahead and do this tech roll. And again, here's the situation with tech. Germany already has advanced mechs. And they have heavy armor on stage two, and we're going to go for stage three on heavy armor. So let's move this over here, let's see if we can't get that. So eight or higher, Germany, heavy armor. Hey, look at that. I don't think Germany's missed a tech roll yet. So it's January 37, and look at this. Um, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and pay that to the bank so we don't double count that money. <clears throat> so, we've got a couple of combat moves. Uh, first, over here, we are going to do another annexation, which we are allowed to do. This guy from Austria is going to move in here to Slovakia. And we're going to annex Slovakia. So he moves in there. Let me go get a German roundel. And some German pieces to mark that. So what we will do here is we'll take this guy out. We'll replace him with a chip. Put that guy on there. And then we'll take this plane off of there. Put that on there. And then we will throw down the German roundel there. Move these guys over so that we can put the German roundel down right there. And then we'll wander over here to the income chart. And we will move uh, Germany up one to 23, right there. And then UK then moves up another one and has another income increase. And they'll be up to 12. So that was that combat move. Now... Let's go to Spain. And let's take a look at the situation in Spain here. So let's back out a little bit here. All right. So the Republicans have got quite a bit of infantry here. Uh, they got three here, they got three up here, and they got one mountain behind. Um, and we've got a pretty potent attacking force here. I really debated about maybe not attacking this turn, but I, again, I think if you're the Nationalists, you want to maximize your recruitment role and you want to put pressure on the Republicans. And now with the Italians and the Germans both throwing in, you're going to kind of hope the Russians maybe think, wow, if the, the, if the Germans and the Italians are both going to support the, the Nationalists, there's only so much I can do. So keeping the pressure on, I think, is best. So we are going to target this uh, Asturia Valencia territory again. I think strategically that's where the battlefield should be. And uh, we're going to move in this plane, obviously. Um, and then we're going to move in the mountain infantry. And the reason we're going to move the mountain in is because they won't suffer the attacker penalty. Um, they'll get upscaled by one of these two artillery, which I'm going to move in here too. Uh, and if I 
take this and I, I, I hold it, that mountain infantry will defend at five um, when they get attacked. And then I'm going to split, I'm going to leave one of these guys here because we know we got a mountain infantry coming in to add to this infantry. So I don't want to move everything out of Leon Castile. So we'll move an infantry in here as well. So that's what we'll do uh, in terms of attacks this turn. So let's uh, move everything to the uh, battle board and then I'll be back and roll it out for you. Okay, so the Nationals have a fighter here, which the mountain territory does not affect. They've got two artillery, one regular infantry, and one mountain infantry. So what happens is these infantry would move down due to the mountains, but then they'd move back up due to being paired with the artillery. And then the artillery themselves would go down due to the mountains. So you end up with four attacking at two and one attacking at six. Republicans have two defending at four in the mountain. Now these artillery do get first strike. So let's go ahead and roll those. Two or less. And there's no hits. So let's go ahead and roll the mountain infantry and the normal infantry now. Two or less. No hits. And then let's roll the fighter at six or less. And there's a hit. And now the Republicans get two back at four or less. And there's one hit. So the Nationals will lose an infantry and the Republicans have lost an infantry. So now we will have um, three at two or less. No need to roll the infantry or the artillery separately now. So three at two or less. No hits. And then the fighter at six or less. Oh, it misses. Now the Republican infantry back at four or less. And it misses. So again, mountain infantry and two nationalist artillery at two. Nothing. And the fighter at six. And that's the hit we needed. And now the Republicans get a shoot back. Four or less. Miss. So about what we expected um, with the Nationalists. So let me uh, pause, move the stuff back, and show you how that turned out. Okay, so we have two artillery there now and one mountain infantry. The plane will fly back to Leon Castile and we'll put the Nationalist piece of pie down there. And that's the end of the combat moves um, for the German player and their aligned miners. So, um, yeah, interesting to see what the Republicans do uh, to counter that. So now let's look at other non-combat moves. And first, let's look at naval operations here. Um, and let's go this way, actually. So um, this sub here, remember, um, so we're in non-combat moves now. Um, Remember, with Canada in the game, no Axis sub can end on a Canadian line without triggering an income increase for Canada. So this guy is going to go one, uh, two, three to C zone 45. Right there. Um, this coastal sub can move two, so it's going to go. One, two, there, in C zone three. Uh, this sub here is, um, let's see what he's going to do. So he could get a one, he's at a naval base, he's at a shipyard, so he could go one, two, three, four, and actually get all the way down here to C zone 47. So let's do that right there. And then um, in terms of naval operations, we'll then move this destroyer back 
into here with the rest of the German Navy. Uh, so they now have two destroyers, a cruiser, a transport, and a torpedo boat destroyer. So not a bad, not a bad Navy. Um, and then for other non-combat moves, um, this plane that we just took from Slovakia is going to move um, up here to be part of the Polish invasion force, potentially. Um, and two of these guys that I got from Slovakia are also going to move here by rail to be a part of the Polish invasion force eventually. Um, this artillery is going to move up to here, right here, and no, you know what, actually, I'm going to move that artillery over here, I need some artillery over here, and then I'm going to kind of leave everything else the same, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to move anything else uh, for the Germans. Next turn, this guy here will go into Sudetenland um, and finish off the German annexation. So let's uh, see what we're going to do now. Okay, so we have an artillery to place and a sub to place. The sub will go here at this shipyard. The artillery will go here. Um, we'll put it under there. So we've now got four infantry and two artillery ready for to go move east or west, which is pretty good. Um, and then we have to deliver the Lin Lease, which will be delivered right here. Another mountain infantry. Um, so. I uh, think about this strategic situation here. Um, you know, Republicans could hit here. You've only got one infantry, a mountain infantry, and a fighter. But all those are defending at, I think, four, five, and six, or seven. Um, what does a fighter defend at, actually, in this game? A uh, fighter defends at six and attacks at six. So... Um, and the mountain defends at five and mountains. So you could hit it and maybe take it, um, but you can't hit this also. Um, and so you would severely expose your position here uh, if you were the Republicans. They're probably gonna try to hit here again, uh, but we'll have to see you know, just how that works out. Um, and then the last thing we do in terms of um, placing units is, go over here and show you this. I paid to move the battleship from stage uh, three to two, which for the Germans costs five. So pay that to the bank and move the battleship there. So they pay five more and they can place that. Um, and then uh, last thing, last two things we need to do is roll uh, the net for recruitment. The nationals have one, two, three territories. Um, so Let's go over here and see if the Nationals can roll a three or less. Nope, didn't get it this time. So um, now we will collect all income and bonuses. So Germany's sitting here at 23. So they saved three, they collect 23. So they'll be at $26 next turn. 25 and 6. 25 and 6. For next turn, move that down to Italy's. And then let's check the victory conditions. Um, don't believe Germany made any headway this turn on any of their victory conditions. Um, nope. So, 
Germany will stay at zero and the axis will remain at one. So there's the situation. Uh, Spain getting ready to, I think in the next turn or two, we'll know which way Spain's going to go uh, this game. Um, the Germans are getting several subs down here. I think you can expect that uh, these subs will try to get down here or even up to here uh, by the start of war. And uh, I think you can expect Germany to have a sub every turn heading out uh, to go on duty as well. Uh, Germany has got a, um, a force of, where's my pointer? Where did my pointer go? Where did, oh, there it is. I think Germany's starting to set up pretty nicely here on the border of France. Four infantry and two artillery. Over here on the border of Poland, four infantry and two artillery. Uh, still got some stuff back here in the center in Berlin. Mountain infantry here in Munich. Um, actually, let's uh, take a flyer here and move him down to Austria. Um, we'll want to take him down when and if we hit Yugoslavia and Greece. So uh, Germany's starting to set up pretty nicely here, I think. Uh, they'll add a battleship to this navy as soon as next turn. Maybe they can start working on their battle cruiser after that. Uh, Germany's doing really well on their tech. They already have advanced mechs, and they're one stage away from heavy armor. So, um, and I think all in all, things look pretty good uh, here for the Nationals. Um, we'll see how adventurous the uh, Republicans get next turn. Uh, I suspect they'll hit this, though. Uh, but we'll have to see. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where things stand right now for Germany. And uh, that was January 1937 for Germany. Hope you all enjoyed this. Admiral Seabass signing off.